Hi guys, Will, just time prepping. How are you guys doing today? Hey, today we're going to talk about uh, chemical weapon breathing protection. Or, in other words, gas masks. This is one of those topics that slips through the cracks for most folks, you know. They worry about their water and their food and uh, this and they that and they're making sure everything's put together right, you know. They got their homestead going the right direction. But sometimes they totally forget about what happens if, some, for some uh, unknown reason, we uh, become under uh, attack by chemical weapons. It's not out of the realm, you know, that they do it in third world countries and stuff. So it could happen here, you just never know. So as I'm going through the rigmarole of telling you a little bit about them, then uh, there'll be some images being popped up here or there, maybe some links across the top of the screen so that you uh, can make educated ch choices as to uh, what sort, sort of gas mask to buy. Uh, this uh, video might be a little longer than 15 minutes, but I really can't help it. There's a lot of information we have to get through. So uh, I'm going to be reading a lot off my notes. There's just a uh, a lot of information, so I can't memorize all of it, so just bear with me. So, uh, what's generally acknowledged as a modern-day gas mask dates back as early as the 1900s. Uh, they used them in World War, I believe they started using them in World War I or World War II. So that was when uh, World War I is when they first started using them, I know from my notes now. <laughs> Uh, so, although they share have been uh, significant advances in technology and materials since those early masks, the basic principle remains the same. Filter out hazardous airborne contaminants and allow the user to breathe safely in hostile environments. One hundred years later, law enforcement and military personnel around the world still use, to train, uh, use and train with gas masks. In today's unpredictable global environment, however, more and more civilians are considering the benefits of including a gas mask in their personal survival uh, kits. So as you can see that although the military used them basically, uh, the uh, survivalists and homesteaders and whatnot are learning to put them in their kits as well so that they are part of the preparation uh, uh, that we get into as, as preppers or survivalists. So the basics of this is a traditional gas mask, sometimes called a respirator, protects against uh, noxious contaminants, although the science can, can get intricate. The basic purpose of the gas mask is designed to filter out harmful substances while allowing a clean, breathable air. The full face gas mask also uh, serves to protect the eyes and other vulnerable tissues while allowing that, the wearer to see and communicate clearly. So, is to keep the contaminants out of your nose and mouth and ears and your eyes and such. But it actually, is that's all it will actually uh, uh, filter through. It won't uh, take care of your body. So things like, uh, uh, let me see what it says. It says uh, sarin, mustard gas, and tabin. Uh, they're all colorless, odorless, and tasteless, and they can be absorbed through your skin. So in order for you to protect that part of your body, you'll have to buy, have to buy you a, a contaminant suit. Uh, those suits are really not that expensive. You can get an all-in-one for about, uh, I don't know, 24 bucks. I think 24 bucks, you could get you a pretty nice suit and it would contain your head and the mask and then the suit would come up overlapping the mask and then go down and protect the rest of your body. So, Depending on the type of the uh, filter you use, the gas mask may provide short-term protection and uh, the particulates found in the smoke, but it won't protect 
uh, it won't protect uh, protect you against ox oxygen deficiency. Also, the gas masks are available in ordinary civilians looking to add another level of security to their crisis in their preparedness stuff. So that's, they're telling you that more and more preppers are starting to uh, put them into their kits and stuff. And you have to learn how to use them, you know. You can't just say, I have one. You have to learn how to put it on, take it off, put it on, take it off, so you can adjust the, the straps accordingly to make sure that the face mask is going to seal properly. You want to make sure that when you breathe in, that the mask actually sucks to your face. If it sucks to your face, then it is actually doing the job it's supposed to be. If you put the darn thing on and you hold the mask up like this, close to your face, and uh, you breathe in and it doesn't suck in against your face, then you have a leak. So you can also see why it's important to practice with them to make sure that you know how to take them on, put them on properly. So, uh, I have covered that. The, the rating would be uh, look for a mask uh, that is for chemicals or for riot control agents such as uh, CBR and RCA and nuclear biological and chemical MBC ratings. Yeah, NBC rating, I don't know how many of you guys know, but NBC rating would be the best type of mask to look for because those the NBC rating covers all of it. And then you want to store them in a cool, dry place and you want to keep them out of the uh, direct sunlight and humidity. Also, uh, there's there's many surplus gas masks available to the public and the Russian ones, Israeli, uh, Chinese, etc. Uh, some military surplus ones are out there. But this is the deal with those guys. Uh, they're probably, if you're going to get a good, a good deal on one, they're probably going to be outdated or defective or just plain junk. Because uh, Masks and filters have been sitting in storage for many years or past uh, their recommended use date, just like food or anything like that. So you want to make sure that don't, just because they you think you're getting a good deal on it, you're probably not. They've probably been recalled due to serious design flaws or just uh, are made out of toxic materials or something like that or they're just uh, broken down it's uh so if you're just looking for a deal <laughs> probably gonna get what you pay for it be like not having one at all by the time you get it on and everything so the replacement filters uh is another important part a gas mask is uh useless without the filters on them now remember, as I'm talking, you're going to be seeing things in the updates up here, and you're going to be, uh, I'm going to be showing you some of the stuff that you need to be looking for. So your gas mask is uh, going to be uh, useless without a proper canister filter, and many filters contain activated charcoal and other chemicals to absorb uh, the harmful agents. So once the mask is sealed around the face and only the air entering the mask will first be needed to pass through the uh, filter uh, media. So you'll know it's time to swap out the filters when you really can't breathe anymore. That's basically what I'm trying to tell you. As you breathe through it, as the, uh, as the filter gets used and the solids start being locked into the filter it'll slowly start not working and you won't be able to breathe so that comes into the fact of how you practice putting it on taking it off when you practice taking it on putting it off make sure that you're practicing uh, taking the canisters off and replacing the canisters with another one because if you're doing it during the event 
you're going to be panicked and you won't uh, be doing it the proper way. So, so the cost versus the benefit. The cost during the benefit is a quality gas mask can set you back hundreds of dollars. It's like I was telling you before. And so they add the cost of the replacement filters and the accessories. You could be looking at a thousand dollars. That's what they're saying here, but it's not really going to be that much if you are actually knowing what you're looking for, as I was telling you before. So whether it's uh, an improper fit, these are some uh, rookie mistakes that you might want to think about. It may be an improper fit or the wrong filter or just a defective product. It doesn't work correctly. You might as well not bother even uh, having one. That's what it comes back to going out and uh, trying to buy one of those bargain basement ones. If it's not going to fit right, if the canister is not uh, going on it correctly, if the filter is not working when you have it on, it's all part of, you may as well not have it on. You're gonna, uh, it's like walking around with nothing on your face to protect you. I'm gonna have an insert, uh, I believe it'll be right up here, uh, so that you can see how the canister is put together and how it works. Maybe that will give you an idea of what goes on within the uh, insides of the canisters so that it will help you understand how important it is to make sure that you buy the right mask and the right canisters. Because without the right ones, you know, you're not going to last too long out there. So I'm going to just read this right off the paper, this next paragraph, because it's important, it's buying a, buying a one-size-fits-all mask. So it goes like this, uh, to be truly effective, a gas mask must be properly fitted. A badly fitted mask will most likely fail. A faulty seal will let uh, contam contaminated air in every time you draw breath. The most common reason for a bad fit is using an incorrect mask or mask size, and masks usually come in three sizes, small, medium, or large, and they are factors to consider To, For example, men with beards will find it's nearly impossible to get a proper fit unless they shave. Likewise, people with glasses will need to remove them, and some gas masks are available with corrective lenses incorporated into the mask itself or with attachments to snap on to your own prescription glasses. So I wanted to make sure I just read that out so that you guys could understand that a little clearer. It's also buying bad filters, the effective lifespan of a filter. Uh, in use varies depending on the circumstances. Uh, remember that temperatures, humidity, and the level of exertion and the concentration level of the suspected contaminants will always affect the useful of the life of your filter. If you're going to invest in a gas mask, make sure you invest in one that is ample uh, supply of quality replacement filters and a filter that can, is expired has been opened and exposed to the air or has otherwise been damaged will probably not protect you. I wanted to make sure I read that uh, right out off the worksheet because it's very important. We're going to get down. Uh, I have a picture on my worksheet here, but I'm going to put it up here in the, up here above so that you can see the, the kits, the, how the mask, mask comes in a kit. Uh, buying the obsolete mask is uh, masks have limited shelf life and they have effective, uh, to be an effective mask they must be free from defects, tears, dry rot, cracking or other issues that might cause it to leak pretty uh, up and out. 
Over time, however, even the best mask will get uh, old and fail. And while there are many questions, masks, uh, many questionable masks available at the low prices, you'll likely get what you pay for. That's remember what I was telling you. So storing your your uh, storing your mask improperly is uh, non-effective. If you uh, store it uh, improperly, uh, the filter, the mask and the filter will deteriorate uh, much faster. Uh, store your mask and filters in a cool, clean, dry storage area. Avoiding temperatures that are extreme and proper storage will always help avoid deforming the shape of your mask. So it comes in like a, an eye pack and you simply put it in there a certain way and that way it uh, maintains its shape. So the goes on to talk about if you're not practicing with your mask, but I covered that uh, farther back into the video, uh, but it's real important that you practice with it, taking it on, taking it off, making sure that you can make it seal, uh, how to take the filters off and put them on. A lot of masks will come with only one filter on it, but will come with another port so that before you take the one off, you can put the new one on and then take the old one off. And it depends on the type of mask that you buy. Now, uh, they have the, the gas mask we've been talking about, they will not, uh, they're not for children. They are just for adults. They do make children's gas masks. They also make what they call a a wrap, and that's a that will be uh, probably up here. I'll put it up here, and that's where you can wrap up infants anywhere between the ages of three months and three years, and it's sort of like a giant gas mask is what it looks like. And, like I said, you'll see it up here. And also they make uh, suits for them. They also have uh, decant decontamination suits for children. And also I will put up uh, uh, the picture of a child wearing a gas mask over here. And then I'll put up the wrap thing over here and that's about what I have. It didn't take me as long as I thought it was gonna. I was gonna make it a two-parter if I needed to, but I thought I would just rattle it on through so that I'd try to get it all in one, just make it a long video. But these are things that we just sometimes forget about, so I wanted to bring it up to make sure that you guys knew. There's a few more things here I wanna talk to you about before we go, though. I got my notes all done, so just going to talk to you straight up here, is uh, the mask, uh, the mask filters, I use an Israeli mask, it's an NBC Israeli mask, and because it is the best, uh, in my opinion, the best, and the filters for it cost about um, $15 a piece, and the mask costs about $39, and that's what I use, and then I just have extra ones. NBC filters are a little bit better filters, excuse me, than an Israeli filter, and some of those will fit an Israeli mask, and they cost about $15, or $13, excuse me, and then there's an MSA filter that cost about $87, and like I said, the masks run anywhere from, it depends on how much money you want to spend, but uh, you can get an effective one, which would be the Israeli mask. Some of them, uh, masks run from uh, anywhere from $1,800 all the way down, <laughs> yeah, $1,800, all the way down to uh, 30, uh, between 30 and $40. So I use the Israeli mask, I use uh, uh, NBC filters on it, and uh, you can also uh, buy some filters uh, that depends on what your, 
how much money you have really or what you, you think that you need, but some filters run as much as uh, $126. And there are some suits that you don't have to buy any filters for. You just put the suit on, you put the mask on, and then they have air tanks that you put well, wear around like a, a backpack. You just put it on, it breathes through a tank. So that just depends on what you really want to do. Uh, I, like I said, I go with the Israeli mask and I have practiced putting it on, taking it off so many times that I can do it my, I can close my eyes and do it now. So that's the real important part about doing it is making sure that you can put it on, take it off. And it, practice makes perfect. I don't care, you know, we talk about practice and everything, but it is. If you practice taking it on, taking it off, taking it, putting it on, taking it off, making sure it seals. And you see this big beard I have, I would have to shave it off if we were to start being under attack. I would go and shave it off because I want to live. So that's something that you would have to take up with your maker, not me. So that's really what I have for you guys at 21 minutes. I thought it would be a whole lot longer than that, but it's not. And I hope you guys got something out of it because man, I researched the heck out of this before I put it up. So, as usual, you guys, God bless you. I love each and every one of you. And it's, as always, God bless you. God bless me. God bless USA. I'll see you out there.